Wondering why it takes you so long to create graphics in Canva to market your business? I hate to break it to you, but it's probably because you're not using Canva the right way. If you wanna save time designing, streamline your graphic creation, and finally ditch the Canva overwhelm, then you are not going to wanna click out of this video because I'm about to blow your mind with some super simple time-saving tricks that you can incorporate into your own design workflow. It is entirely possible that what you are about to watch will change the way that you design Design in Canva forever. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kristen and I share branding and graphic design tips, tricks, tutorials, and productivity hacks for online entrepreneurs who don't have tons of time to waste in Canva. So before I dig in to these life-changing Canva tips, it is crazy important that your Canva account is organized. If you didn't catch my first video about Canva organization, you're definitely going to want to give that a watch. I truly believe that having an organized Canva account is the foundation of using Canva effectively. So in that video, I dig into how to organize your account the right way. One once your Canva account is fairly organized, it's going to be easier to see how all of these little tips and tricks work together to streamline your design workflow. Come along, let's pop into my Canva account so I can show you how it's done. First things first, you need to be utilizing Canva's amazing folder system. You can set up these folders quite like you would on your desktop or laptop computer. I have quite a few folders in my own account, but one folder that's going to make designing consistent graphics so much easier is to have at least one folder that contains all of your brand imagery. I personally have mine broken up into a couple different folders. I have a brand photos of Kristen folder that contains some photos from a photo shoe and a bunch of my brand selfie headshots. I have my stock images folder that is fully loaded with stock images that I can use in my graphics. Another helpful folder to have is a folder that contains all of the design elements that you commonly use in your graphics. You can create folders for any graphics that you use often in your business, book covers, affiliate images, or images of your own products. Having all of these stock photos and elements and graphics organized into these folders is going to make them super easy to access when it comes time to design. Stick with me, I'll dig into that in just a few minutes. Another thing that I recommend that you get in the habit of doing is creating what I like to call build files for graphics you use often in your designs. For example, I have this mock-up build file of some lead magnets and freebies that I often incorporate into my graphics. I recommend you create a couple variations so you have some options when it's time to place them onto your graphics. There are so many ways that you can showcase your digital products, lead magnets, freebies, and content upgrades like all of these examples you see here that I recently just released inside my membership. It's super easy to drag and drop JPEGs of your digital products or screen grabs into these mock-ups to really kick your graphics up a notch. I also have this document which contains tons and tons of brand selfie headshots and having them all in one file makes it super easy to add these photos of myself to pretty much any graphic that I'm creating. Another thing that you should get in the habit of doing is to create a long running document for each graphic graphic that you often create. This is an example of my Pinterest pin image document. And as you can see, there are tons of different pin images in here that I can take and tweak, switch out the headline, drop in a new stock photo to create new fresh pins super quick. Doing this will always ensure that you are using the right size and you are staying consistent to your brand. When it's time for me to create pins, I simply find a layout that's going to work, add a new headline, switch out the stock photo, and I'm good to go. You can make a few slight adjustments, change the colors, and even copy and paste text or elements from other layouts. Hold up, before I go any further, if you're liking these tips so far, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can continue learning how to design amazing graphics alongside me. Another way that you can save tons of time creating graphics in Canva is to repurpose and reuse graphics that you have already created. This is my running document of YouTube thumbnails, and when it's time to create a blog post, I can select everything on the page, 
copy it and paste it into my blog post design document. You're probably going to need to resize things just a bit and switch out the headline if necessary, but this is a trick that's going to save you so much time. From here, you can quickly drop these elements into a Pinterest pin, an Instagram post or carousel, and batch create all of your graphics. Earlier in this video, I mentioned my love for Canva folders and how they are absolutely crucial for using Canva the right way. So now I'm going to take this a step further and show you exactly why. I don't know about you, but pretty much every single graphic that I create in Canva to market my business involves the use of on-brand stock photography. I'm not a professional photographer, so I rely on done-for-you images that convey the vibe and tone of my brand. Here is my stock photo folder with all of my stock photos uploaded into it. To upload your own stock photos, just click this little plus sign up here and upload. Pull the photos from your desktop or wherever you have them stored and add them to this folder. Now, let me introduce you to the magic of this left panel over here. This panel is accessible when you are in any design, and if you're not using it, I'll bet that you're wasting tons of time. Right now, my left-hand panel is pretty empty. Your panel probably looks a little bit different than this. Let's say I want to create a new YouTube thumbnail from scratch, and I want to start with a photo background. Simply click folders over here in the left-hand panel, and you are going to be shown all of the folders that you have created inside of your Canva account. I'm going to go in into my brand folder, click into stock images, and here I have all of those uploaded images that live inside that folder. All you need to do is click to add it to your document. You can adjust the size, crop it, rotate it, or do whatever you like. You can select different photos from your stock photo folder. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> you can use the same workflow to add any design elements that you have in your design elements folder. If your design element folder is not yet, over here in the left-hand panel, click folders, locate the folder where your design elements are, and click to add. To easily add mock-ups of your lead magnets or digital products, go into your folders and locate that build file. Not only can you add images that you've uploaded to this folder, but you can also add pages from a design. Just go in to the design file and you're going to see all of the pages that you've already created. I usually add a new page and then click on any of the images to add that mock-up to your document adjust to fit, edit if needed, and quickly create graphics to market your digital products or lead magnets. It's a good practice to have your stock images, design elements, and any other commonly used graphics, mockups, or product images easily accessible in this left panel. You can continue adding folder shortcuts into this panel, but if you find too many, just hover over it and click the little X. I'm a huge fan of repurposing different text and elements from graphics, but I also love a good template. And I'm gonna show you some tricks that you can use to style your templates really quickly to match your brand. Let's say you wanna create a lead magnet starting with this template. Templates are pretty generic. They're not going to look anything like your own brand image, but Canva makes it super easy to make them totally unique to your business. Let me show you how. Over here in the left-hand panel, you're going to see this styles icon. And if you have your brand kit set up in Canva, you should see your fonts and your color palettes accessible right here in the panel. Click your fonts, then you can customize the colors. If you click your color palette over here, it's going to shuffle through some different options and you can just select the one you like. When you're changing the fonts and the colors, be sure to click this purple button down here so it applies to all of the pages in your design. You're probably going to have to go in and make some edits like changing the fonts, stylizing the text, and adjusting sizes. But the Canva styles option will get you headed in the right direction for quickly customizing all of those templates that you're purchasing. You can also stylize blocks of text or other design elements really quickly with this paint roller tool right up here in the right hand corner. All you need to do is select the element, style it however you like, click the roller and paste the style onto other elements. Doing this is going to help you stay consistent and save you tons of time. Designing in Canva doesn't have to be a total time suck, overwhelming, or even frustrating. I know that if you put these simple design workflow hacks to use, you'll feel like a Canva pro in no time. And before you go, if you're ready to better manage the design side of your business, then be sure to catch my free design training from chaos to Canva pro. I'll link it in the video description. Give it a watch and prepare to take control of your brand, your graphics, and your Canva account. I can't wait to see what you create. Bye!